All right, so today's uh, big idea is uh, we're going to talk about Snapchat. Snapchat is really the, the social network that breaks all the rules. Snapchat, it, its interface is different than what we've used. Its goal seems to be different. Its demographics, it really uh, is kind of bewildering. And in all honesty, I feel I also am somewhat still bewildered by Snapchat. It is uh, kind of very still out there and then maybe I, I'm past its demographic to get it uh, so we'll see uh, we'll see we'll see what that means uh, just um, for curiosity I haven't checked today but uh, snapchat is a publicly traded corporation just like others in the social network sphere um, I, I'm just curious what their stock is 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 up to today since today the stock market's having a bad day I, I wonder why uh, so, uh, just to take a quick look, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up Snapchat stock. You know, you can I've mentioned uh, websites where you can look stock quotes and all of that. But one that I like is money.msn.com. So, if you'd like to check this yourself, I'm just gonna look up Snapchat stock for a moment. Now, when they debuted, when they debuted, they were at um, thirty-five dollars or so per share. Let's see today. 1537 okay well um, snapchat um, they've been in publicly traded for less than a year <clears throat> they were the first big tech IPO of last year after a big period about three or four years ago it kind of cooled off there weren't that many tech companies uh, coming out uh, and then snapchat everyone thought well okay snapchat that's the uh, that's the next big thing that's where all the kids are at we, we've got a uh, invest in a company that really has their pulse uh, on the uh, on, on this demographic, and so Snapchat, um, you know, was at about thirty dollars, thirty-five dollars, or something per share, and then little by little, they've they've been eroding their stock price. Now today, they're having a good day. Apparently, they're they're up, uh, but you know, over fourteen dollars. But if we look at it in the long term, a year. Actually, I guess not that high. They were in their 20s, mid-20s. And um, I, I think I mentioned previously about how there were a couple of times that some big celebrities uh, dissed Snapchat, and it really affected their stock price. Kylie Jenner and Rihanna both said bad things about Snapchat in the last few months. I was probably right here. This point right here. This point right here. Uh, something happened, and they did really well. They did really well. Their stock price jumped up really high, probably insider trading or something, uh, and then it's down again. So, Snapchat, in the one hand, is even at fifteen thirty-seven with a little bit of a rise, is at a good price point to invest in, perhaps. But uh, again, I'm not giving any advice on any thing of this sort, and I'm not a, a guru in the stock market, so if you lose money on an investment, don't blame me. But if you make money, I'll take the credit. Um, so I am not and will not invest in Snapchat myself. I just don't believe they are a um, company that um, is really worth it in terms of are they going to turn a profit? Are they going to reach their goals? Are they going to be profitable for their investors? Most of these online companies, the answer has been no. Twitter has not been a good investment. Um, Etsy has not been a good investment. Um, Facebook has broken the mold and has been a good investment, but we know Facebook's troubles at the moment. Um, and as for Snapchat, um, I just don't think they've got a product that really is going to work because their big idea has o had always been the social network for kids. Your parents are not here. You're you're going to be safe here. You're uh, they're not. They don't know how fa uh, Snapchat works. So come over to us. Well, um, after they saturate that market, uh, they need to then move forward and and reach more people. So now, face uh, Snapchat is trying to reach. Uh, Parents, the ones that they were actually, you know, saying they're not going to be here. So um, they're changing their interface. They're changing their goal of who they're trying to attract. 
and I think that's just them trying to figure out or tr flailing a little bit. Well, we've got to keep the investors happy. They're not happy. They've lost money. What can we do? Okay, let's invite everyone. Let's make it. Let's make Snapchat for everyone, even though that wasn't the original goal of it. Now the statistic is that they have about 180 million subscribers, so that's that's good. Twitter has about 330 million, uh, but then Facebook's got about two billion, uh, not million, two billion. So Snapchat um, demographics of 180 million is paltry compared to Facebook, but everything's paltry compared to Facebook except YouTube, that's got also about a billion uh, subscribers. So. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see what Snapchat stock was doing today, and in the week it's up, but in the month it's down, and in the year it's down. So I had a discussion with my friend before they were going to go public back in uh, April. Well, I guess it's a, it's a, I guess it's a year now, actually. April nineteenth, I guess. Uh, so yeah, a Facebook, uh, Snapchat. Snapchat stock has been out for a year, and it's uh, lower than it was a year ago, $5, which when you have these values, that's a big drop. Um, I had a conversation with my friend. She was thinking about investing in Snapchat, and she asked my opinion, and I said, no, I, I wouldn't do it. I don't think their product is sustainable. I don't think they're going to work in terms of they will... Uh, they want to go to the youth demographic, which is fickle, and you're not going to be cool forever uh, with your youth demographic, so I would not recommend Snapchat. Um, and she says, well, you know, maybe, you know, I'll sell a few of my Apple shares and have enough to buy some Snapchat. And I said, I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't do that. Uh, and she did. And so uh, I don't know how much, but she said under $2,000. She um, bought some uh, Snapchat stock. And um, at probably like $21. So uh, I think her investment has decreased a bit. But you never know, it might come back. Maybe someone will buy them. Maybe Facebook will buy them to take out the competition, and then she'll get her, her value back. You never know. But on the positivity, uh, let's look at how Snapchat can be useful for you, uh, for your business, for your brand, for your products. Uh, I have a, uh, a link that you can check out. Go ahead and go to your web browser, and then uh, let's go to whatis.snapchat.com. This is the, um, this is the, uh, this is the screen where Snapchat attempts to explain itself to a demographic that needs it, like me. So let's go check out this screen. What, what is dot snapchat dot com? All right. So the first thing here, Snapchat is a camera. No, not the kind with a flash bulb and lens cap. Those haven't existed for twenty years. It's a new kind of camera that's connected to your friends and the world. Over 180 million people use it every day to talk, play, learn, and take some pictures too. And if you look at those uh, photos in the back, they're okay, young people, young people, kangaroos, funny characters, families with birthday parties. So it's just so funny to me to see the, the evolution of Snapchat. In the very beginning, it really, really, really was such kind of like a controversial, illicit sort of social network because its big draw was that whatever you posted on Snapchat would automatically delete itself in 24 hours. Ooh, well, that's perfect for me to put shenanigans online that will disappear. But uh, that's sustainable long enough They've got to make money for their investors, so now they've got to get everyone on board. Uh, kids, well, at least 13 years old and up, families, grandparents, uh, young adults, etc. So, yes. That is the official. That is the official company line, and uh, you know uh, they a company to. A company has to, if they purport to be something and they're not that, that is then very detrimental, especially for like their stock price. So if they're saying, yes, your, your photos and your content disappears in 24 hours, and if there's suddenly then an expose 
that that determines no nothing is actually deleted they're storing it and, and spying on you then their stock price is going to tank even worse so it is up to the company to be honest for the sake of the investors at least not for the sake of their users really but for their investors um, I ha in these years there have been a few stories here and there about it doesn't seem like it's completely this that it disappears but when that's exposed, then they say, well, we're going to fix it. So uh, you, you have to trust the company. Yeah. Again, that's like Facebook saying that once you delete your account, it's deleted, and then come to find out it's not deleted. Yeah, all of these companies, uh, they, they are guilty of that because digital, digital content, on the one hand, can easily and definitively be deleted, but on the other hand, it can be very easily be copied and stored and backed up. And these companies, in their terms of service, they always have you know pages and pages of terms of service that no one reads. And in there, it says things like you know, we're, uh, for your safety, we're going to store your data just in case, and that sort of thing. So when we say, no, I want to delete my Facebook account, they say, okay, it'll be deleted. But if you log back in within 90 days, your data is still safe there, just in case you still wanted it. No, I wanted to delete it because I wanted to delete it, not that it's still there 90 days and such. As for Snapchat. Um, same same sort of thing. Um, its big draw is that it disappears in 24 hours, and uh, you know they they do have to store some data longer than that uh, for their own sort of you know analytics purposes, I suppose. And then it's supposed to get deleted. Uh, this goes back, unfortunately, then to say, well, um, uh, anything that you put online, uh, you you sort of have to f uh, understand nowadays that it's not gonna probably be as private as you think it's not going to disappear when you think it's very unfortunate because so many of us live so many of our, our lives online and we have so much trust to these you know and I don't want to be just like the stereotypical anti-capitalist anti-corporate person but yeah these corporations are in it to make money they're not in it to be friends with you and so if you um, trust the corporations are, are going to have your best interest, you're probably a little misguided because they've got their investors. And don't get me wrong, I'm an investor too because I want to invest and retire one day and all of that. So I can see both sides of it that I don't want them to store my stuff. I want to delete it because I said to delete it, but they're not storing it. But I understand that the company has to uh, you know, do what it needs to do to be profitable and be part of the economy and such. So this goes on to say what else? Um, yes. So um, it's it's big draw is <laughs> is fun and friends and all of that. Oh look, you can have a space whale float floating around in your photo. You can put yourself cool little uh, uh, glasses and and um, eyebrows and such. So it is a very fun network. It is very um, frivolous, not in a negative way, of course, but it's very fun and like, look at that. You can, you can take a, a little video of your friend doing karaoke and at the same time put a little digital dancer and all that stuff. So it's very, very... Yeah. I'm surprised that um, Facebook hasn't added these effects. They have added many of these effects, actually. Yeah. Uh, in the guise of Instagram, because remember, Snap, uh, Facebook owns Instagram. So yes, you can put. Remember, I didn't I do it in this class where I gave myself like cat ears or something in Instagram. Well, Facebook has it via Instagram. Uh, people are stealing everything from Snapchat. That's part of the reason why its uh, stock price is also depressed. Question over there. Yeah, that was kind of my question. Um, was can you share the things you make in this? This network, this network. So you can. So you I can. If I get something that's a Bitmoji, does that mean they Snapchat and then send it in a text message? Yeah, a Bitmoji is uh, Snapchat's proprietary name for making your own your own little unique avatar thing. So emoji is like the this is like the generic name. All of these cute little faces and stuff. Bitmoji is is Snapchat's version of it. So yes, anything you create in Snapchat, you can then also send it off to any other network. Um, they've been better about that. In the beginning, it was it's stuck in this network because you want to be in this network. But then now, because they know they've got to be out there in uh, as many areas as possible, uh, they do make it so that yeah, you can you you created it for Snapchat, but you can then also share it back to Facebook or uh, Twitter or whatever. So 
Just kind of a cheater way to create the characters. It, it could be. Based on the picture. It, it um, I haven't, because it's a paid thing, um, I haven't quite educated myself enough in it to for the full value of that. Uh, and then for businesses, again, I, uh, that it depends on your business. So are you said it's a paid thing? So Snapchat, you have to pay? No, 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 the Bitmoji. Oh. Their emoji, the Snapchat emoji. But like other networks, it has things uh, that you pay for as well, which which we'll see what they are as a business. Yes. So you're, so you're seeing like this Bitmoji is kind of like a little ad type of thing. No, uh, they have their own real kinds of ads that we'll look at. It's just a uh, it's just a little digital avatar. It's a fun cartoony okay. version of yourself. One of the first big changes that uh, Snapchat did was. Um, it was just about, okay, people connecting with people. So then as they were gearing up to go public, to be a publicly traded corporation to buy stocks and such, they then started to add a brand new thing called uh, Discover, which is then big names got their foothold into uh, Snapchat. Uh, for example, as, we, as we're seeing here, uh, Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and I'm like, really, this demographic is going to read the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times? But they've also got BuzzFeed and MTV and VH1 and all of that. Basically, as we will see this when we, when we do it, uh, these, these big names get their own like, little spot in, in the Snapchat interface for you to then go look at their latest stories. Uh, so Wall Street Journal creates snaps. Uh, for Snapchat that then, okay, you got 24 hours to watch it, uh, come and watch it and uh, reply to it and all of that. So this is how they were going, or this is how they're trying to make money at the moment uh, before they open more of the floodgates to regular people. They're getting not exactly endorsement or product placement, but they're, it's advertising. They're selling advertising to NBC for you to get on, you know, not exactly the front page, but let's say the front page of Snapchat so that your uh, subscribers can see it. Yes? So if you were to create something in your, um, you know, just say like scrolling back up to you know, one of your previous videos, and you had these other things where the fine whale, you're making uh -huh. that. And then you share it on, say, Facebook. So in 24 hours, would it just disappear from Facebook then? No. Get sucked back into the... No, they're not linked in that way. So what you're sharing here on Snapchat, this will disappear in 24 hours. But then if you transfer it over to Facebook, then it's governed by the Facebook system, which okay. then it doesn't disappear so there. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not linked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Uh, Go back to the discovery thing. So you're saying that they, they make like a little ad for 24 hours and then it disappears? It's more of like stories. Okay. It's more of like an article that you swipe through to read a few screens of content or watch a video or play a sound. It's like really like short attention span articles. Um, you know, there's one from Bazaar, you know, Bazaar magazine. So it's, this is why you look, what, what did it say? This is why... This is why you look like death in the winter. Okay, so that sounds interesting. I'm going to click it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to uh, read this article from Bazaar. Then Snapchat charges Bazaar because someone clicked to read it, just like ads on YouTube or everywhere else. Do you know if that goes to their site, or is it just opens in a new browser? It opens in Snapchat. In Snapchat. Uh, then if you want to, then you can follow a link. If they set it up, then you, if you want to, you follow a link back to Bazaar. Okay. But at the very least, it stays in, in Snapchat. But it can, it can go to like Facebook or Instagram or something like that. Yeah. They, uh, I don't know the full limitations of it. I wouldn't doubt it that then they wouldn't allow that, that they set it up that it takes them to their Instagram or Facebook because then, okay, then they're losing traffic that way. I, probably it's like you click on here and it'll go to bizarre.com instead of the Facebook or the Instagram or the Twitter, which are competitors. Yes. So I'm assuming you have to have a Snapchat account to, to uh, investigate this discovery and who's in there. Yes. All of these amazing things that it's showing us have to be done in the, in the Snapchat app. But you have to show ID or uh, Over. <laughs> you have to be at least 13. I believe you have to be at least 13 to use it. <laughs> at least 13. <laughs>
now also then you can you can communicate one on one in this way in like the classic uh, direct messaging and such you can put something out for all your followers so you're, you're gonna have followers and all of that as usual you can put a snap out for all of your followers or you can communicate one on one privately no one would see that uh, but again anything you do online you don't shouldn't really assume unfortunately that it's private because I may have I may be chatting privately with my friends on my private thing but most uh, devices will allow you to press a keyboard a combination of buttons and it takes a snapshot so in most phones you press a certain button and then it saves the screen and then what you do with the screen is whatever you want so I wouldn't assume it's private chat off the record just like in person Text sent in chat are deleted by default, but you can always, but you can always save something important or hilarious. So let's make some notes here. Snapchat. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, I just uh, because a lot of what they've done is. You know, kind of with facts and stuff like that, that's relatively easy to, you know, kind of mimic or copy as their kind of primary well, differentiator. Everything uh, I've said before that I, I what I what I don't like about social networks nowadays is they've homogenized so much they've become so similar. Twitter was originally 140 characters. What can you say in that? in that text. Then they added video. Well, YouTube has video. Then they said, okay, well, 140 is not enough. Let's up, let's up it to 280. Well, now you can chat more like Facebook. Then uh, Facebook, um, it, it needed a, a way to uh, share graphics and such, so uh, it bought Instagram. And now Instagram has stories, which is what Snapchat had first. Uh, so all of the networks steal from each other. Uh, and uh, it's like, well, it, they they become so similar that something is there. Something needs to stand out. Um, um, Pinterest uh, is very visual and, and all of that. Um, uh, Google Plus borrowed their kind of layout with their uh, collections, so all of them borrow from each other. Yes. But isn't there like copyrights that you know, minimize the copying and help them out? Yes, in theory, but uh, some things are perhaps generic enough that uh, they can say, well, our version of it is different enough that it doesn't infringe on your copyrights, uh, which um, then it gets figured out in the, in the courts, and when they've got millions of dollars to then go to the court, then uh, there might be a stalemate about, okay, we'll spend $10 million to fight this, but they'll spend $10 million, it won't get us anywhere, so we won't fight it. Who knows? So you can take photos, slideshow... All these are your snaps. So on Twitter, they're tweets, and on video, they're, I mean, and on YouTube, they're videos, and, uh, and Snapchat, what you share, the content that you share is a snap. You, you publish a snap. Um, create an account, either a business or personal, and publish, uh, to everyone, which is uh, public, or one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which is private, your content, your snaps disappear uh, after 24 hours. So it's it's part it's the idea of it, which which I, I think is cool, is that. Uh, yeah, especially for the demographic, well, uh, you know, I may be young and I'm sharing all of these embarrassing things and I don't want it to get out, so yeah, I like that it disappears in 24 hours. Uh, that was the big draw of it. Um, and also, you know, our short attention span culture of uh, what's new, what's next, what's funny, what's interesting, what's, uh, what, what else can I see? So it would have you as a Snapchat user well, you're going to share something that's going to be amazing today, but what else do you have tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day? So, you can add filters to snaps. That sounds familiar. You can add filters in Twitter. You can add filters in um, Instagram. Okay, you can add filters or stickers 
Well, stickers, those are like putting little icons and emoji and all that fun stuff on your photos. Well, that sounds familiar. You can even do that nowadays on, on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, uh, now you can put fun stickers on your stuff. Uh, they're trying to make it more business-like. Uh, I don't remember if I showed it on the day we, we looked at uh, LinkedIn, but uh, you can put fun uh, stickers on your stuff too, but now it's uh, like a, a, a cat with a business tie and stuff like that because it's LinkedIn. Um, so you can add filters, stickers, location. So you, you, take, a, you take a photo of them. I'm, a, I'm at this party, and I'm going to also attach the location to it um, to show off that I, I'm at this place for real. You can only get that certain sticker or filter or such at a location. And we'll see why that's pretty important for us as a business. So we'll come back to that. Um, um, newest um, add AR filters. AR. What does anyone know what that might be? AR. Reality. Augmented reality. Augmented reality is we saw that whale flying around in that example. Someone was recording their backyard. There was a whale flying around. That's augmented reality. Um, you might have heard of virtual reality. Virtual reality is when you put on some goggles, it blocks out the real world, and you're wearing these goggles, and you see this virtual world. That's virtual reality. Augmented reality is through, through a camera lens or other goggles, you still see the real world, but then stuff is added to it. It's been augmented. So this is augmented reality. So virtual reality. You block out the real world and enter a new one. Augmented reality. You add to, or you augment, you add to the real world. So a few years ago, I, I remember seeing um, this uh, presentation from Microsoft. Um, they, they have this project called HoloLens. And now that I think about it, I haven't heard much about it except for that hype a few years ago. And they showed that you put on these goggles, um, you still see out to the real world, but when you're wearing the goggles, you, you can then control a computer. You can swipe around and tap and send an email and all of that. Uh, you can play games. And I remember the demo was that you know a person is in their living room, and there's like little creatures in the corner that you have to stomp on. And then there's like a star up here that you have to reach up and grab. So you're in the real world, and you're playing a game on the real world. It's augmented. So uh, Snapchat has this now. Uh, where you can uh, take a photo of the real world or a video of the real world and have that little dancing guy. You saw the guy doing karaoke, and then at the same time they're recording it to share with their friends, and they've got a little guy breakdancing right there. So, augmented reality. Let's see, I wanted to say... Okay, so... Um... One of the big draws that was so cool in the beginning for Snapchat is that there were all of these filters based on location, geo filters, which is um, filters you can only get while physically at a location. So we will go into this in detail in a bit, but here's the, here's the very simple idea. I'm a business, I create a geo filter for my business. The only way for the person to get that filter is to be at my location. So let's say I'm Victor's Bakery. I create a filter which, ha which gives you a funny um, cake hat. I'm gonna take a, people are gonna take photos and the only way that they can then put a, a, a hat on their heads that is a cake is when they're at my location. So, yeah, it's one of the ones that hasn't quite been stolen, 
by the other networks yet. Um, geo filters, where at a location there's special things. Um, if anyone um, has kids or knows kids that were really or are really into Pokemon Go, uh, which is, you know, I'm going to go catch Pikachu. So I'm going to walk around in the real world and I'm going to look around. There's Pikachu. I'm going to go to that business and catch Pikachu. Well, those businesses would have traffic coming to their location and they could really take advantage of. Here's kids trying to catch the Pokemon and they can come to the business and buy a soda or whatever. So Pokemon Go um, has been sort of like the the network that kind of borrowed that the most, uh, but I haven't quite seen it in the in, in Facebook or Twitter or anything like that. Um, what's that? Pokemon Go is Pokemon Go on now. Some people are still diehards about it. <laughs> yes. Are you going to cover how to create a geo? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're going to cover all of these. So, um, uh, so just very briefly, for a business, use it to create content that can only be found at your location to entice traffic. Now this, of course, uh, means that it's best for a business with a physical location. If I'm a plumber that goes to your business, it doesn't make much sense for me to use it because um, I don't have a main office or you could come to, to hire me. I'm getting my business by being called. So you're going to call me. I'm a plumber. I go to your place. So it depends on the, on the business if it's valuable or not. So only traffic your person. Exactly. You, uh, you're going to, in a physical location, have your phone and you're going to use Snapchat and you're going to find that filter at that location. Now on the on the dark side of, of that, um, there is a uh, there there is this there's a speed filter that um, you know when you're walking it'll tell you you're walking two miles an hour. So you take a photo and it says I'm walking two miles an hour. Okay, well great. So that means I'm going to jog a little bit. Ooh, I'm I'm actually running. You know. Uh, five miles an hour, so I can put it on my photo that I'm going that fast. Well, I'm going to ride my bike, and uh, okay, now I'm going, you know, 12 miles an hour. Okay, I'm going to drive my car, so uh, I'm going to be Snapchatting right here and driving right here, and oh, I'm driving 65 miles an hour. And it has happened that w someone wanted to get the fastest speed, which is like 100 miles an hour, and they caused an accident, and they killed someone. So... Uh, Snapchat has had to deactivate and, and put a little pop-up that says, you know, please do not drive and use this filter at the same time because someone wanted to get the fastest speed while selfieing and then they killed someone. So there's always a downside to this stuff. Um, uh, when it's new and interesting and uh, no one has figured it out yet. Um, so all of this... Um, Let's do this now. Let's look at um, simply snapchat.com. You can't do very much on Snapchat without the app, but there's actually certain things that you can only do on a computer. Uh, when you go here, create face lenses now with Lens Studio. So you can create these sort of little digital creatures uh, with their free app um, on the website. Let me show the example right here. You see that little dancing thing? Let's see when it, re when it, let's see when it loops here again. Um, so watch this. When the, right there. That little dancing critter right there. You can create those, uh, either from their built-in templates or from uh, your own digital skills. Uh, 
So this is a software that you download and install on your computer, and then you have the ability to create these little digital critters. Um, again, for the purpose of this is unique, I can't find it anywhere else, this business has it, I want to go to their business, the only place that I can see that little digital cartoon is if I go to the business. Again, AR, augmented reality. Looking at the top here, create, create your own, personalize your own filters and lenses. Um, you know, it, there's these main kinds: community, a filter, a lens. Uh, the example of the community filter, for example, uh, attach it to a location here. It's Santa Monica. So let's say you're. Uh, part of you're on the board of a homeowners association uh, you could create one of these community filters that based on the location when they're in the community they have the ability to unlock this to, to use this to attach this to their photo that's the community one the filters would be something like this where um, it's like a frame that is put around a photo so here's a happy couple you're the photographer, you created a filter that everyone at the wedding can access uniquely only on that day and, and time and such. Um, and so that's a little bit of self-branding. Uh, people will be saying, well, I, I took a, a snap and there was an amazing filter who, uh, who, um, who set that up. And then they'll say, well, we, our photographer did it. So it's like advertising for themselves for their business. Yes? Can a filter be copyrighted? Yes, but then, uh, you know, it. Uh, everything that you create is always copyrighted. Uh, any tweet, your tweets are technically copyrighted, and everything that you share on every network is technically copyrighted to you. Uh, so, the, the problem is that the, the built-in templates, uh, I believe, Okay, your content of what the filter says and such is yours, but the the template of the this particular design and such, I think that's copyrighted to Snapchat. But if you know Photoshop and such, you can make your own completely original filter, and then it's all completely yours. You're just using the Snapchat system to publish it. And then lenses are uh, these where you uh, take a photo uh, and uh, you can add yourself cat ears or cool sunglasses and, and all of that. So businesses can create all of these. Uh, and these, this is the part where, um, this is the part where you pay for this. This is one of the ways Snapchat is making money. So, um, Businesses get charged to create these various filters and lenses, community filters, geo filters, and all of that. So we can say here at the moment, Snapchat makes its money by charging businesses to create the various offerings of Snapchat. So that's an original lens, a geo filter, uh, uh, AR character. Uh, Facebook is going to charge you for that. And we'll see prices and, and all of that. And it can be very affordable. Um, so depending on the business, this is where I have to be really honest and say, Snapchat is not going to be useful for most businesses. Uh, as we're seeing the, the culture of it so far, it's very young, it's very juvenile, not in a negative way, of course, but it, it, that's not my demographic. I'm a lawyer. You know, I'm a CPA. Uh, I, I'm a, this business that I'm not looking for that demographic. I'm not looking for a very fun, frivolous, young sort of demographic. Snapchat is trying to attract the older people. So then eventually, perhaps, then... A person that does need their taxes done will be looking at Snapchat to fire to hire a CPA. Maybe I, I don't know, 
But honestly, at the moment, I really think this is not for most businesses. If I'm, you know, if if I'm a if I'm a if I'm a DJ, if I'm an artist, if I'm a, a vape store, okay, great. I've got all of these possibilities of an audience, depending what my audience is. But you know, you have to ask yourself: Am I trying to find an audience that is very millennial or very young, or however you define that? Because that's the main demographic there at the moment. So it could work or it could not. It depends on your product and your audience. Uh, snap codes. We'll look at that in a moment. Let me let me look at that a little later. Snap codes are these right here. Uh, these are uh, these are sort of like uh, have you have you seen uh, people um, putting their phone on a little like barcode and, and pressing to to read the barcode? This is a barcode. This is a snap code. This is actually scannable. If you've got the Snapchat app, you can scan that and something will happen. So you're able to create snap codes. Uh, I see these at businesses, um, you know, a bakery or whatever. Uh, oftentimes, uh, these hipper bakeries or hipper businesses, they've got somewhere on the wall or somewhere a whole bunch of icons of Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and all of that. And so they have one of these. You can print these out for your own business. It'll be on the wall somewhere, and then they might have a, an ad there in the business that says, uh, follow us on Snapchat, and then get 10% off your next scone, or whatever. So uh, people click that, they follow you on Snapchat, they, they show the business owner, and then they get a scone. So it's uh, whatever enticement to get people to follow you, because again, all of the following and all of the networks is a captive audience, no matter how new or mold breaking the system the the network is they're all trying to get a follower because that's a captive audience um, to uh, to make sales to and snapchat it's your business on mobile so we'll look at this in detail but uh, again uh, this is the part where uh, as a business you will be paying to uh, reach an audience in a variety of ways filters and um, stories and all of that. So, use case scenarios. Here's how Pepsi uses it, how Bacardi uses it, how the music uh, CD anthology thing uses it. Snap ads, deep linking capabilities help now. 61 garner nearly 3 million top snap views. Going back. Um, then there's just plain old, yes. These companies pay Snapchat in order to put up their yes. users with our traffic. Exactly. Yes, the business is going to pay Snapchat to, to get to the users. Just like we would do that on Twitter or YouTube or Facebook. As a business, I can pay Facebook to reach the audience. I can pay YouTube to reach the audience. I can pay Snapchat to reach the audience. Ads. Uh, what else? Download. What do we have under downloads? Okay, so under downloads, it's just going to send you a link there to um, go get the Snapchat app for your device. Uh, store. I'm trying to find something else over here. New products coming soon. Okay, so one of the things that was very interesting, which I'm not seeing anymore, and they used to have it. Uh, very publicly, but uh, let me find it this way. Uh, snap spectacles. Okay, you can look at it here. Spectacles.com. Uh, Snapchat ventured into their own fashionable glasses that linked directly to your Snapchat Snapchat account, meaning you can take a photo or a video from your spectacles and it goes directly to your snapchat account so you would wear these you would take a photo you would take a video and you would share it right away over to snapchat different colors you can see here uh, well on my projector not as well but there's a little camera lens right here and also some other digital thing there 
So whatever you're looking at, you can take the photo of it right away, or the video. So how does that go with privacy issues and say... It doesn't. <laughs> Short answer, glib answer. Um, this, then we're figuring it out. It's the wild west of all of this stuff. Uh, it's if people have a camera on their face and I don't want to be recorded. Well, what what can I do? I, I, who's gonna know? You know, how many of you have ever heard of Snap Spectacles until I told you that right now? Almost no one. So if you walk, if you were walking around the beach or wherever, and someone was wearing these, would you think that they were a camera? No, you would think, oh, some cool glasses hipster with glasses or something. I don't know. You most you wouldn't think that there's a camera. Now, it doesn't mean that the person is recording 24 hours a day. We don't know. Now, I have seen, I remember seeing uh, a proof of concept sort of article of, on technology a, a year ago or so, where someone was developing some sort of system that would auto-scramble your face to these things. So, uh, I don't remember how it worked at all, but I remember... Uh, reading the article where it's like you're you're wearing something and it causes you know uh, radiation or something that will cause that these cameras to malfunction. So on the one hand uh, you're getting uh, irradiated, but on the other hand uh, you're not getting recorded. So trade-offs. No, they're still here, but it's like we've got to figure it out because uh, it's just you know uh, uh, the famous uh, you know quote in, in the first Jurassic Park about, you know, you, you scientists could do it, but did you ever stop, stop and think, should you do it? Mm -hmm. So uh, these companies, yeah, we can make a cool camera on your face, but should we? And this is not the only one. Google has made one. Microsoft is making one. They're, they're all making something like this. Uh, but uh, no one's quite figuring out privacy and legislation and all of that. And it's a lot of this stuff is reactive. Uh, something happens after something else happens. So, you know, they, they have the no smoking signs after epidemics of smoking. They have the wear your seatbelt after epidemics of car crashes. They have this and that after something negative happened. Uh, hey, maybe, maybe not drive 90 miles an hour and take a photo of yourself. So now, after something happens where, when like some, some big controversial things happen, then they'll react to it. So... Um, Cameras everywhere, definitely, and um, yeah, we have to have to be vigilant, and it's a brave new world. Now let's see here, one hundred twenty-nine dollars. Oh, they went down in price. They used to be one hundred and ninety-nine dollars, and the reason for that is uh, these are not a hit. Okay, so we're worried about privacy. No one's buying them. Uh, they weren't hot like they wanted them. The big hype about this was you could only buy these through a pop-up kiosk. You wouldn't be able to buy them anywhere, not even on the website. You could only buy them when the Snapchat company would magically appear somewhere with a kiosk throughout the US. And I remember um, they were really hyping it that over on Shelter Island, uh, the, the spectacle kiosk is here. It actually kind of looks like a, let's see, do they have any more pictures of it? It looks like, it looked like a minion. You know, those uh, little yellow cartoony guys. It was a kiosk that was this big, it had a big eye. You go there, you put your credit card in, and you, and you bought it. And people would be uh, lining up to at least look at it. But then they were $199. And after a few years um, that they weren't really selling, I remember reading a, a financial report sometime last year or early this year saying they had like, you know, 200 million of them in inventory unsold. Uh, it was they were not selling so you used to see that directly on the snapchat website there was a link there for spectacles and I don't see it anymore it's off on their own site somewhere else over there and I have uh, after the initial sort of like hipster aspect of it then they did start to sell them at stores physically and I remember seeing them for sale I think at UTC uh, they still might be there but um, oh, you can buy the charging case for it, forty nine ninety nine. But you can buy it in real life. Oh, and the and the cleaning cloth is, if you haven't realized it by now, uh, the Snap uh, logo or mascot is this little ghost thing, because ghosts disappear, and so do your snaps. So 
just um, something interesting, not really viable or important at all anymore. But the idea was camera on your face to share your memories. Um, and of course, the aspect of it, I have this and you don't, and you don't know how to get it. Because it was you can only get them with a kiosk that would appear randomly throughout the country. Um, let's look at a couple more things, then we will um, take a break and then actually log in. If you go, there was um, back on snapchat.com, uh, there was a link that said map. Uh, so then this gives you a map, uh, a, a heat map, where the, the hotter something is, the more of something there is. So this is Snapchat related stuff. Uh, so let's see what's happening in the gas lamp quarter. Um, there's a lot of Snapchat activity happening over um, Columbia District, West C Street and West A Street. Um, probably, what are we seeing over here? First National Bank, huh. Columbia Square, bank robbery, bank robbery and someone's, <laughs> someone's filming it. So all of these little things. Okay, someone's at the 7-Eleven over here. So um, by default, what, what you could do is th this content. Okay, over here, someone at SDSU has put a public uh, story uh, for, for you to, to look at. No, I haven't really Homeboy looking um, like Forrest Gump. <laughs> looked at any of these, so I don't know what will be safe for work. But... People here, oh, there's a skunk at SDSU at the moment. Recording four lectures at once. Measure. So, um, that's, um, ah! Snapchat. Ah! So, uh, that's, uh, people being active on Snapchat and sharing it out there because, again, fleeting internet fame. Uh, I might uh, get go viral uh, with with my with my Twitter or with my Snapchat or with my YouTube or something like that. There's something in Sierra Mesa right near us. Uh oh. Two words. So what is that? Sorry, I missed what you said about the just the heat map thing. What is that? Well, that's activity. That's activity. Uh, when it's cooler blue, some, some a few people are using Snapchat there. When it's hotter, red, lots of people are using Snapchat there or being very active. And what's the difference between that and then the, the stories that you see posted? Well, a story is the activity that's happening at that location. So why is there only clickable ones in a few places? There? The ones that are clickable are the ones that someone has made public. Oh, I see. Okay. So what what is not visible or clickable here is activity, but not necessarily people making it public. Gotcha. The point of this is that, okay, something is happening over here. Taft Junior High School. No. Well, something's, people are using Snapchat there. So my, my point was that if I look at this as a business and, and I see people are, there's a really, really, really light one right here. It's very, barely visible right there. Oh, where are we at? Arrow Court, right? Right over here, right? We're right over here. So down over here, there's houses and stuff, and there's a park. So actually, there's like a... If I come up from, from the north to, to get here, and there's like a offices or something here, so someone's using Snapchat there. The point of this is, if I'm a business, I look at the map, I see there's activity in these locations, I might think I can put, I can purchase a filter and attach it there. I know that people are active there, so I'm going to spend a little bit to put my filter about my business, my self-promotion there, if they see it and see, oh, what is this new filter? Oh, what's this business? I am interested in that product. Uh, so we'll do that in detail after the break. But the idea is this can tell you in general, and there's a very light one here too, this can tell you in general where activity is happening, which I may then capitalize as a business. Yes, so a lot of activity at a school. Um, it's a junior high school, which I'm not comfortable with, but they're, they are using it. Question. I'm just seeing, because I saw activity over at the beach area, mm -hmm. so I clicked on it, and so now this person is showing these different areas at the beach, 
And then I'm seeing the different um, little icon things that you were talking about. So it's, um, what do you call it? The Bitmoji? Yeah, where it was for the community, those community mm. felt things. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting. Yeah, people, uh, people, you know, 180 million users, I've been kind of sarcastic about it the whole time, but 180 million users that you could find your demographic there uh, and, uh, you know, market to the demographic because all of this is just another marketing aspect, just like Twitter, Facebook, etc., but just kind of like very edgy, um, just another way. Yeah. Is there anyone you could uh, find the length of the story on this Instagram? The length, like the amount of time? Yeah, how long will they post the videos? Some of them will really long and how long? You, you see that um, best on the app. On the app, it, it shows you, because right now we're just taking a look at it on the computer, and this is designed a little bit more to actually be used on the app. On the app itself, there's a little bar that progresses to tell you how long it is. I don't think it actually tells you in the length of time, but it shows you a little bar about how long the story is. Yeah. So there's little spots all over the place. And uh, one last thing, I'll go back. Uh, that was Map Lens Studio. So again, that's the that's the software that you can download. Um, I've played with it a little bit, and it does range from straightforward enough for non-techie people to create, but powerful enough that if you know some code, you can even make it better. The idea is then, if you can see within the video here, uh, someone creates some sort of character. Um, and advertising my business, and when the person is at a location, they can see this. Create your own magical augmented reality experiences and share them in the most used augmented reality platform in the world. Yeah, I guess they could claim that at the moment because AR is so, so young. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that, yes, this is the number one place for AR at the moment. So that could be a way for you to get your foot in the door with a demographic, so it's you know it's different things. Um, it's basically going to be all of this is, is really about how um, how can you say it's like the uniqueness. Look what I'm doing. Look what look what I found. Um, if you can create content on Snapchat that is unique to versus everyone else. Perhaps you have an an audience like right here at dancing dancing butter stick that will help me sell my my CPA business. So uh, you create these things, these experiences, or these fun things to that no one else has, and you try to reach your audience. Yeah, you can reuse it over and over and over. Yeah. Without charge. Uh, no, no. These they, these are the ones that are charged. Uh, you create these things. To, uh, you can create them for free, but then when you want to publish them for people yeah, to use, that's when you you get charged. Story? No, you you don't. I don't believe you need to. Um, yeah, that, that, I believe that's up to you to to put that or not, because that is that privacy issue, which they try to have some control of that. So I don't think you need to put it. So here you get a sort of case study. CLT, she's an animator. Here's how she used it. Andrew, he's a student and an engineer. Here's how he used it. Cyrene Q is an influencer, which is often someone that has a lot of pull on social media. Uh, so you can sort of see the um, case studies. Create and publish your, your lens in three ways. First, you set up your artwork. You can use built-in uh, assets, like this little fun raccoon in a, what do you call this, a floaty? Uh, or you can create your own. 
you can then design it to do something, to dance or talk or advertise your business or something, and then you publish it and promote it. Promotion, of course, is the code word for pay for it. Uh, and then you could reach an audience. So then people could see it and then, oh, this is fun, I like it, what is it? And then it'll tell them, you know, send it to your friends, free advertising. Maybe you have, you know how you have the people that are on the corner flipping those signs? Well, you could have something like that in here, advertising your business. They're flipping a sign, they're promoting it and being happy, and then someone finds it, oh, this is fun, this is cute, let me send it to a friend, and then you're advertising the business. I think, however, unfortunately, this really is the network where the leap of faith between fun content to sale is the biggest. Because on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all of those more, quote, traditional networks, the, the, the jump between the content and making a sale, I think, is smaller. And here, I think it's way much bigger. I think people are on Snapchat because people are on Snapchat because they don't they want to see something fun and talk to friends and something dumb and frivolous that'll go away in 24 hours. And like, really, for businesses, I'm not quite sold on it. But I want to show people all of the ins and outs of Snapchat, and you may, you may, it may work great for your business, for your demographics. Uh, you never know. So that's why I do this overview. Uh, three months of all of these different networks for you to at least get acc acclimated to them and then figure out which is best for your business. I think so. I think on that, that, that is going to be a big <coughs> thing. We've seen in pop culture for years about the future, you're going to have holograms and all this cool stuff, and, and we're going to get there, I think. Uh, and this is like the baby steps of that. So if you exploit it now when no one else is, it may give you a leg up on the competition. So uh, let's uh, take our first break. Any questions before that?